Okay, hi guys. On this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a super simple draft pool in Java. And yeah, prepared this. Well, actually, I just typed in the name there and I let Eclipse generate a project for me. So it does have a source folder. And we're going to add a class simple draft pool. Will be in the package, I don't know. Com.example.tutorial and something like that it's not too important i'm going for simple thread pool but also up to you and yes there's basically our class simple thread pool nothing implemented so far so and what we're going to need for a thread pool um are basically two fields which is the threads worker threads, I'm, I'm going to call them worker threads, an array, threads, so they, there they are, and a linked list of um, runnables, so this will be our task queue. And so what, what do we need for an implementation? Obviously we do need a constructor, so we're going to start off with a public simple thread pool. That's the way you uh, declare a constructor in Java. And we're going to take as an argument um, the number of threads that the thread pool should organize. So there are threads. Uh, we did not implement linked list runnables. We did, well, we did not import the linked list. Um, uh, yeah, well, and this is actually runnable, not runnables. It's a linked list of runnables, but the single type is runnable. And the worker thread is what we're going to implement ourselves. That's why it's still underlined red. So are you, we're we starting off with the constructor. Our task queue should be a new linked list uh, with objects of the type runnable runnable just need the brackets yep and the threads are a new array of worker threads threads yes with the quantity that um, was specified through the parameter and what we also need to do is um, to iterate through that through that um, array of threads uh, yeah, threads dot uh, to, to iterate through that array and to um, construct the arrays, uh, to create the arrays. So they say new worker thread, and we you will see this in the implementation. Then this should should be rather obvious because a, pool, pool, a thread pool is basically an object which keeps those threads alive and has them ready at hand when you need them so it should be rather obvious that we do need to start them it's not equal actually but start so that's that's our constructor i'm going to save that for, s for now so we have the constructor um and I think we should first care about these worker threads because this is pretty much red underlying code. We don't want that. So we're going to create public class could could also be a private class actually. Thread extends thread. So and this should resolve most of the issues, right? Um save this. Work threads, what does this do? Yeah, I've used the plural here because it actually are several threads due to it being an array. But yeah, we're going to use the name there. So, and when we extend the worker thread, um, 
there's always one method if you extend thread that you gotta override it's the run method and that's what we're going to do and as we are not just executing those those worker threads like um we just execute what's in them but we want these ready at hand we will use those worker threads to execute runnables on them on the context of the thread so it will need the runnable and now we do have to access the ma the, the queue the task queue yes in, in an infinite loop and yeah as long as this thread runs it's going to do the following it's going to um, synchronize the task queue object because um, those threads, if, if we had several threads and that's what thread pool was good for they would all try to access this at once if we did not synchronize it we so we do have to synchronize uh, the access to the task queue so and while um, the task queue is empty so actually I'm not sure why code completion isn't working, but I'm going to type it all in then. While the task queue is empty, we are going to wait on it. Wait on it because it's a method. We're going to wait for it, actually. Um, oh, yeah, that's why code completion wouldn't work. It's not a type. It's an object. It's queue. We're waiting for it. Um, but we do have, Eclipse will tell us, we do have to wrap this in a try-catch block. Yes, and interrupt the exception, this will not happen, so we're just going to ignore it. Yeah. And if actually task queue notifies us that, well, we, d we do have to notify, uh, the call notify on the task queue itself, but we're going to do that whenever an item is added. So in this special case, it's going to say, well, well, I've got a new task ready, and if we are done, if this thread then is the lucky one to get notified, it will, um, well, the wait, so, so, so it, it will uh, come out of the wait, where it's now just idling, not, not doing anything actually, I will come out of the wait and do the following. it will fetch the runnable from the task queue yeah. fetch the runnable from the task queue, it will leave then the synchronized block and this is very important because if it did not leave the synchronized block then um, no, one out, no, no other thread could actually access um, could actually uh, yeah access uh, the list yes so that's that's not what we want oh and we also we, we don't want it to happen here because obviously we're going to remove that and it's probably being empty again and we run into this and this is going to happen all over so we're going to remove that here and paste it here so that this is where it should be so and now we do have the runnable and we're going out of the synchronized block, we're going out of, of um, this loop statement. So now this thread is working. No, it's not. Let's, 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 let's make it work and then explain. We're going to try r.run because that's where the code of the runnable went, where it was created. It will have to be extended by the user. Um, you want to catch exceptions here. So whenever you, the the one probably you, who is using that, produces code which will run into an, to, to an error, you don't want your your thread pool to die. So you could like give ma uh, make a log utility to the thread pool. We are just going to ignore the exceptions that could occur here. So what this does is uh, this this gets out of 
out of, of the, out of uh, no, not out of the, the infinite loop, but out of this synchronized and out of this while statement. See, those, those belong together, we're out of the synchronized block. And while this is now trying to execute the code, which is within the r.run method, this task queue can be accessed by any other thread and the next can be fetched. And so, so basically in the task queue are the, the, the tasks the thread pool is to execute and they will be shared among all the threads that the thread pool has. And when this is run and this completed, it's going to go here. You see this is the corresponding bracket and it will, the, the while, while true, it, it will loop infinitely. So if this is executed, it will go here, it will ask for the synchronize on the task queue and it will wait for a new task to, to appear and it will fetch the task, go out of the synchronize and run that task. So, and the only thing that we do need to add now, so in order to make this a usable solution, we do need some, some, some um, method for the chat pool where you could actually queue tasks. So what we're gonna, gonna do is we're gonna write this method and I'm not gonna call anything queue again because I obviously cannot write that without making mistakes. Um, which will take a runnable R as an argument and again we're gonna synchronize the task queue otherwise it, it, um, th there may occur errors that you really don't want to see happening um, as is with con concurrent programming as always is that it has a lot of pitfalls and you want to avoid those uh, what we're going to do is to add the new task to our task queue and then what's, what's really important I explained what wait does and I said we're going to have to call this on task queue ourselves and that's what we're doing here yes see I'm, I'm not able to write queue notify this does the magic so when notify is called then one of the threads waiting on this will awake and it will awake it will see oh there's a new task beautiful new task I can fetch that and it will fetch and it will execute that and if a new task runs into this uh, while this is executing another thread will grab that so yeah that basically is everything we need for a simple thread pool implementation and there are a lot of lot of things you can do better. As you could, uh, for example, add logging to it because you might want to log something here and to log something here. You could um, grew, uh, have have not not used a runnable, but to create your own interface to have maybe something run uh, on on different threads, different methods, if those were. Uh, methods not accessing the same data fields. Um, you probably could even, as, as you know from the Android async task, have run something on a separate thread and then come back with another method and a synchronize, come back to the main thread actually and execute a last piece of code there. So this is just an idea and this is just a very, the most simple implementation of a thread pool that one could think of. So yeah, thank you for your patience, thank you for watching, and yeah, leave your comments if you wish.